we're just going to get right into it. On, on talkorigins.org, there are frequently asked questions there. And uh, there's a bunch of them that you can find. And we're, we're going to answer uh, the FAQ, which, which we have as number four, is they ask the question of this. And then they answer it. If evolution is true, then why are there so many gaps in the fossil record? Shouldn't there be more transitional fossils? And I, I think those are good answers, or questions at least. That's a good question. Yeah. The answer this person put is, due to the rarity of preservation and the likelihood that speciation occur, occurs in small populations during geologically short periods of time, by the way, this is a tongue twister, transitions between species are uncommon in the fossil record. Transitions, not transactions, <laughs> transitions at the higher taxonomic levels, however, are abundant. <coughs> now, for those of you that are going, that was sure a lot of big words, what is this person actually saying? And then let's get into your answer. Well, he's using a tag <coughs> that I think a lot of evolutionists like to use, and that's using big fancy words, so then people just assume you know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, basically, at one point they're saying that preservation doesn't happen a lot. Um, because of the way they think fossilization occurs. Um, and then they go on to say that transition from one species to another um, happens in such a short period of time, um, geologically speaking anyway, and millions of years maybe instead of billions, um, that you're not going to find uh, transitions in the fossil record anyway. Um, but then they go on to say later on in the answer that transitions are actually pretty common, uh, which or abundant is the term they use, which I think is just kind of outlining why this argument is really frustrating sometimes, or this discussion is really frustrating. Mm -hmm. They say that it doesn't happen much, but then they say that it happens a lot, and they're okay with saying that it doesn't happen much and that it happens a lot. Their answer kind of demonstrates also that they'd like to give themselves a free ticket. Okay. The evolutionist thinks he can say whatever he wants to because it's, he's just making it all up anyway. Um, but he says that speciation occurs uh, in small populations over a pretty short period of time. <coughs> so you're not going to see it in the in the fossil record, and I think that that's just saying, um, you know, hey, we don't see it in the fossil record, even though Darwin said that we would, um, because it just doesn't happen, you know, fat, uh, slow enough, or it doesn't, or it happens in a small population, not a large population. When uh, I don't know how many different evolutionists think that, but Darwin didn't think that. Darwin said that my theory is going to stand on the fossil record, or the fossil record is basically going to be the foundation of what what we think here. And we've got uh, well over 100 years of, of digging, and we haven't found a single uh, indisputable transition form. Okay. Uh, referring to from ape to, to, to human, there's all kinds of things that they say are transitions and lower uh, levels of uh, the, the animal kingdom and stuff. But uh, I don't think any of those are actually legitimate. <clears throat> so I, while you take a deep breath there, I have a question for you. Okay. Because they, they would say there are links between something that was like a ape up to human that that, that we, they found them what do you say to those transitional fossils that they say are true missing links i mean if they're not missing links then what are they <clears throat> you know to be honest if it's actually genuine and it was a real fossil <laughs> that they really found and they didn't doctor or they didn't put two different fossils together to make it which has happened there's all kinds of hoaxes and fraud and stuff that's happened in evolution um they don't like, <clears throat> like to talk about that stuff but um Almost every time it's an ape of some sort. Uh, you can draw a picture of it and then remove 90% of its hair <clears throat> and it looks like a person, but it's really an ape. It doesn't matter how much hair you put on it, the artist doesn't have any idea. Uh, there have been a few cases where it was actually people, Neanderthal man being a perfect example of it was a human. I mean, Neanderthal's brain was bigger than the average man's now, so obviously it wasn't an ape. But uh, mm -hmm. anyway, I think most of the time when you're looking at that stuff, the Australopithecines and, and those things, uh, it's an extinct ape. Okay. All right. Now, I, we're going to put a link up, by the way, to a video of a guy named Dr. Lovejoy, who is from Kent State University and uh, here in Ohio. Uh, we're going to put this up to show you what they do with the information that they have and the facts and how they change them to what they want. You're going to be blown away by what you see on this video. He, he talks about how the hips of this creature just aren't the right hips. And you need to see what this person actually does in order to make the information say what they want it to. You're going to be blown away. This happens all the time. 
let's keep going. Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of a good segue into <laughs> what they really when they're when they're talking about a hominid, a, a half man, half ape kind of a thing, or the missing link, whatever terminology we want to use. They'll find three bones. <clears throat> Uh, they'll find two of them here, and which when they find a bone, it's not like they find the full bone. It's usually a piece of a bone. And then uh, 100 feet over here and 10 feet deeper, they're going to find another bone. And so then they're going to say, well, it must be from, must be uh, the rest of this little thing that we found over here. So then they have these three bones, which literally weigh about four ounces total. And then they construct an, a, a half man, half ape, and the artist who is just making it up which is what 99% of the, the idea is, is it's stuff's made up. Uh, they construct this thing that looks, I mean, obviously you can make it look like a person, you can make it look like an ape, or you can look like it's halfway in between, and for convenience they make it look halfway in between. I mean, there's cases of that happening all the time, where they find a pile of bones, and then they pull three of them out and say, ooh, these bones go together. The rest of them, they probably don't. That's something else, but these bones go together, so now we have something that's a transition form. Yeah, they don't know. They don't know what color it was. They don't know if it had hair. They don't know if it how big the teeth were, where this stuff sat. Like I said, they've got three different bones, and then they construct an entire thing from that. And yeah, they may have uh, some reasons to believe some of this stuff is correct, and some of it may be correct. But All right, as we get out of here, Steve, what's the one thing we want people to take away from this? We find gaps in the in the fossil record because there is there's no common ancestry so I mean it didn't happen so that's why you can't find evidence for it in the fossil record all right and everybody don't be afraid comment down there and you know what we we answer comments right I love to see the yeah. comments yeah we, we love to talk and keep in mind we are looking for truth okay right. we are looking for the truth so if you have something show us the evidence so we can at least look at it and we'll all make a logical conclusion we'll all deal with it together I mean we're not here to fight I mean that's fair to say right uh, right I mean we, we are not here to fight we're here to have a discussion and actually get through this so just appreciate you guys out there and Steve you got anything else you want to say negative